I was given this hoverboard to look at, but I was told that it was dropped and after that it wouldn't turn on, wouldn't charge, it wouldn't do anything. Uh, we hit the power button here on the side and uh, so you can see nothing happens. It's got like a battery indicator right here and I'm, I'm not sure what that means. I've never actually played with one of these before or anything. So I had no idea what to, what to expect. Uh, one thing I did notice is that they're a lot heavier than I would have expected one of these to be. I thought they were going to be a lot lighter. So um, yeah, no major signs of damage on the outside or anything. Uh, one thing I did notice though, it looks like it's there's something been spilled on it. It's kind of eh, sticky right here on the sides. Like, I don't know, soda or something got spilled on it. But anyways, so that's the hoverboard itself. I, I kind of don't like that name for these things. I mean. It, it's it's on wheels come on but anyway one thing i noticed almost immediately on this charger is that there's uh, something weird going on in the back here it's got a little legend it says uh if i could get it to focus there on the words okay if the led is red it means that it's charging and if it's green it means that it's uh, a <laughs> green light means charge uh, full or oh, charge full or disconnect so uh, if we don't have this plugged in to the unit when we turn it on or when we plug it in if we don't have the the charge in plugged into the, the actual hoverboard wave when we plug this in this should be green according to that legend but if i plug it in it takes a bit and it, it just turns red and as you can see it's kind of pulsing it's not a steady a red or anything so i figured huh i wonder if something's going on with the charger that's uh causing it to not work properly or to maybe not charge the the unit itself so I'm plug it I'm plug it here real quick and I already removed the screws from this I opened it up and immediately well not immediately but took the cover off um, well first of all this power supply looks really cheap and it's supposed to it puts out 42 volts at 2 amps which is a uh, pretty high it's a lot higher than I would have expected too but I mean I guess it kind of makes sense so uh, we take this off and there's not a terrible or like a large number of parts or anything that we can see up here we got the main transformer there a couple caps that's probably a rectifier right there this is probably going to be our transistor that drives the transformer got a rectifier rectifier bridge right there or bridge rectifier it's got a fuse cap the bottom not a whole lot going on this one right here is going to be our main uh, PWM controller and down here we have an LM358 and you're not going to be able to tell right there maybe but there's actually a hole in it like it popped so this thing blew and that's probably why the LED isn't uh, doing what it's supposed to do the LED is actually down here in this corner and so we're gonna have to replace that but then uh you know we're, we come to the point that like why did this blow was there something going on with the output here so i traced continuity to the uh, positive and negative because there's only two wires coming from the from the actual power supply there to these two pins right here up on the top which correspond to these two pins down here on the bottom of the input to the board so if i check the continuity on those two pins right there it's uh yeah it's pretty much a dead short it doesn't matter which uh polarity i touch the i touch the uh, two leads to well one seems to be reading a little bit lower resistance than if i do it in the other direction but yeah i don't think it's supposed to be like that at all i mean it, it should read something higher so we're gonna open it up and see what we can see inside okay so i've loosened up all the screws on the bottoms here and there's the oh stuff attached okay oh well we got some connectors here we can just remove so this goes to it's an LED a little cluster of LEDs right here on that side so that's this connector there's another connector here that goes to the power button so that one goes here and then the last one is the one for the power input that's this one right here so it actually Okay, so this one doesn't even go to this side. This one has some wires that goes across through the middle here. And goes over to this side. 
Oh, and I had to wipe up some of that sticky stuff off there. It turns out that it, it wasn't like soda or anything. It, it was like almost like adhesive that had leaked out from these uh, rubber pads up here or something. I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to wipe up, but I got some. I got most of it off. So there's another one of these little LEDs right there on that. So that comes off. Oh, right. Oh, there's our battery pack. Huh, it's funny. There's like hardly anything here, but got a huge battery pack over on this side. So those two power wires come over to this side here and look like they go straight into the battery. Interesting. A eh, piece of foam. So uh, it's a 36 volt battery, 2200 milliamp hour. Uh, we got two pretty similar looking boards on both sides here. Looks like it's just a been rotated but they look like they're pretty identical I don't know if they are or not so the motors uh, are apparently built into the I would think that the motors are actually the wheels themselves because I don't see anything else and there's really not much room for anything else down here either we've got some heat sinks down here on the bottom those would be for the all the power stuff for the motors um, one thing I have noticed also is that this wheel seems to rotate a little bit easier than this one this one feels like it's got a lot of resistance when i try to turn it you can see i'm really trying there but it's it's resisting really bad this one here seems to be a little bit easier i guess we got to figure out what's going on here unfortunately it looks like this battery pack is all sealed uh it's got this connector i can remove here cool uh, and here's another one looks like maybe this battery should come out if i Pull it off of here. Looks like you might have some double-sided tape or something. It feels like sticking in there. All right, so it took a lot of prying, but finally managed to pull it off. So now we got to get these wires out of here. There we go. All right, so there's our battery pack. Let's see if we're getting anything at all from here. I guess I could have tested this while it was still in there, but if I'm gonna have to open it up, then whatever. So that's reading 37. Point 84 so that seems okay I wonder if there's something here huh 37 I guess maybe that's why it was looking like a short because yeah that goes directly to that power input so huh maybe there's nothing wrong with the battery so we're gonna put this aside for now. I don't think there's anything going on in there right now. But uh, I don't know, maybe it could just be the charger and we did this all for nothing. But uh, there's still this issue where, as we can see that this wheel rolls pretty freely. And this one, it's really stubborn like, almost like something shorted. Uh, it looks like these three right here should be the ones that go to the motor. Looks <laughs> So they got this really thin gauge cable coming in here to this fat one here. And then they just covered up the center here with the, some electrical tape. So we should be able to remove these, just little bullet connectors. And we'll pull two of them out. And let's see if it, okay. So now this rolls a lot more freely. So I guess there might be something shorted on this board. I'm wondering if that's what's causing the issues because also this board is the one that has the power button on it. So I don't know if there's something wrong with this. There might be something wrong with this board after all. You can actually see the little accelerometer right there, a little tiny, little tiny uh, chip right there. So we'll let's take this board off and see if um, one of those. Uh, it's probably going to be like power MOSFETs right here. Let's see if one of those is bad or one or more is bad, maybe. Since these boards are identical, or at least they look like they're pretty identical, um, this one also has an on and off. Uh, a header right here for a button but obviously there was nothing plugged into this one because it didn't the buttons over on this side so I'm wondering maybe if we hook up the battery and we try to um, we'll short these two out and see if it turns on or something and uh, see if it does anything this cable right here that goes from one side to the other uh, it says a uh, use art on the board there so that's just a uh, looks like it's just a serial connection between the two boards so let's see, we will plug this one back in. This one goes to the LEDs. One of those LEDs that were up on top there, it's got some of this hot glue on there, take that off. Okay, so let's plug that in. Let's plug the battery in. 
Okay, let's uh, get a little screwdriver there and we'll poke it. And we'll see if this, uh, maybe at least we can get just one side to turn on. Like I said, I, I've never messed with these things so I don't know exactly what they will or won't do. Oh, look at that, turned on. Um, I'm guessing it wants to be flipped over probably. Let's see, unless that just uh, some sort of error code. Hey, look at that, battery light's green. So I'm guessing it's beeping, probably because the other board isn't connected and it's uh, expecting something there. Um, I'm a little hesitant to connect it just because if uh, something is dead on the other side, I don't want to burn it up any more than it already is. So let's disconnect this battery and let's uh, see if we can find what might be bad on the other board. All right, so here's the board completely unscrewed and uh, Something I didn't expect to see, I didn't know there was, uh, there's kind of like these uh, buttons right here. There's some optical sensors right here on the on the, both sides of the board. So I guess when you tilt, I'm, you end up interrupting the the signal to the, like, because one of these is going to be an LED, the other one's going to be like a photodiode or a transistor or something, so it interrupts the light. And I guess that's how it knows if you're trying to go forward and backwards, but... I'm pretty sure that's going to be an accelerometer right there, so depending on how much you're tilting is how how fast it goes or not. I've never ridden one, like I said, so I, I'm not 100% sure how these things work. But there's our all of our power devices, and it's uh, three sets of MOSFETs, uh, one for going to each phase of that motor. It's going to be one of these uh, brushless DC motors. And uh, let's uh, take a look and see if uh, something is shorted here, which I'm, I'm betting it probably is. Uh, nothing looks... Uh, fried or burnt on board so hopefully there's nothing seriously wrong with it I don't know if we'd be able to replace this entire board if you know if needed or because trying to figure out what all this stuff is I doubt I'm gonna be able to get like a schematic for it there's not a whole lot on here I mean that's gonna be like the main microcontroller like I said it's gonna be accelerometer I can't see that number I'd have to look at it up close and see that's uh, uh I can't tell I'm on a flight right now but um that's a 5 volt regulator right there, 7805. And that looks like it might be a 3.3 .3 volt regulator right there, a little tiny one. Uh, a bunch of passive stuff. So that's probably going to be like an EEPROM, I'm guessing. Oh no, that's, a, that's another uh, 358, another LM 358 there. Now um, we got the little buzzer right there. So let's uh, poke around. All right, let's 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 see what we're getting here. Let's, let's see if there's a... Uh, I'm guessing there's going to be a short between at least one or two of these. And, uh, oh, wrong setting there. Let's, so that's showing 19, almost 20K right there. So it doesn't look like it's a, this one here. It's run about 10K. So definitely a lot lower. And these two show 10K. Ah. Let's just check each MOSFET here between the drain and the source. 10K, 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 10K. Ha! Ah, short right there. It's reading 0.32. Yeah, it's just uh, about 0.300 ohms right there. And, oh, this one's like reading completely short. This one's like reading 0 0.01 or 0 0.1. So there's definitely probably one of these two that's completely, one or both of these two that are completely dead. These look like they're probably okay. Let's remove those. And uh, I don't have any of these on hand. These are IRFB 3607s. I don't have any of those in my stuff, so I'm going to have to order a couple of those or oh, I mean a few I'm, I don't know maybe I should just replace them all while I'm at it because if these went bad and you know they cost some uh, to uh, start failing on those I don't want them to, to just fail all of a sudden so I'm just probably gonna replace all six of these and uh, we're probably gonna have to continue this video later then because like I said I don't have any of those what I could do for now is I'll look up the specs for these because I don't know them off the top of my head either if I have something that I can at least use to, to test it out, just to make sure that it, it all works, I will. And then uh, once I make sure that it's all working fine, then I'll go ahead and uh, 
replace them with what they're supposed to be. Okay, well we got the soldering iron going here trying to heat up. Uh, I thought we should probably check the coils on the motor, or the wheel. Because if this did get dropped and one of the coils or something got damaged inside, then uh, we're probably going to end up blowing something as soon as we try to run it again once I replace some of those MOSFETs. So let's see what the resistance is between all three uh, the phases here. So, so that's reading 0.4. I don't know what they're supposed to be, but if uh, something's wrong, we're probably gonna probably gonna see like some major difference between here. That says 0.3 ohms. And that shows 0.3. So uh, maybe there's nothing wrong with the coils. I'm hoping. Uh, we can probably we can compare it to the other side and see what the other side reads because there was nothing apparently wrong with the other side. So if both sides are good, we should probably get about the same readings. And these are color coded, so I'm just pulling them out here. I'm not too worried about where they go because it's easy to tell where they go. So we got point three, yeah. We got point three, point four. Oh, sorry, you can't see there. <laughs> so these look like they're fine. Or I mean on the other side, it looks like they're they're pretty similar values to what's on this side. So I'm guessing that there's not gonna be anything wrong with the coils on that motor. So we're gonna leave that alone. Um it looks like everything should be fine there. So we'll just replace the continue working on this. And uh see what we get. I've already removed the screws from the tabs there and I've kind of separated them a bit from the from the heat sink. That way when I heat them up the heat sink doesn't pull heat away from the collector or the collector, the, uh, the drain pin from each MOSFET. So let's see we're just gonna flood it with solder here and this should loosen it up fairly quickly. Alright, now I'm just cleaning up these holes here. Alright, so we got our board cleaned up. So we can put some in there just to test. I'm going to look up the specs on these just to see if I have something that might be somewhat similar. I'm starting to wonder if maybe there's a possibility that those two uh, overheated or something and ended up shorting because it looks like all they did was put a layer of captain tape over the heat sink so these uh, the MOSFETs are all clamped down but the only uh, thermal material between them is just uh, this Kapton tape so I don't know I don't know about that so just check these two again and yeah they're both dead you can hear the continuity buzzer going off in the background there they are both of these are gone okay so I pulled out a couple of IRFZ 48N MOSFETs here, these are rated at 55 volts, uh, 64 amps, and they should do the trick for now just so we can test it out. I'm not going to try to ride this thing because I don't want to uh, maybe possibly overload or something and end up burning something else up, but we will put these on the board and we'll just uh, maybe give it a shot here on the on the bench itself and or I'll put it on the floor and I'll just uh, you know put my hands on those uh, optical sensors and stuff, the buttons, and see if... Uh, we can get it to move or do anything. Hopefully, if we can get it to at least turn on, then we know that something was, you know, screwy on here. But let's see what we get. One thing I almost forgot to check is uh, the gate drive circuitry for both of these uh, MOSFETs here. Uh, we've got the gate uh, pins right here, this one and that one. That goes down to a 68 ohm resistor right here, which I already ohmed out, and it it reads fine. The only other thing to check would be these uh, transistors here. Uh, one of these is probably a diode. I'm not sure. But um, those would be the ones that drive the gate to turn it on and off. And we're just going to do a diode check on these and make sure that none of them are reading shorted or anything. I'm assuming one of these is going to be PMP and one of these is going to be MPN. But this one here, between this, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of making assumptions here, but usually this is the way it goes, is that this would be the base. And showing about almost a 0.7 volt drop there. This one here would probably be the... Uh, collector and that's showing about the same so that looks pretty good let's check this one here I don't know if this is going to be the same or not and uh, about 0.7 volt drop there and 
I don't know. Let me see. I can't really tell what they are. Okay. So these two are both uh, marked Y2. So these both are going to be the same. And that one's uh, marked uh, G1. So maybe if this one was an NPN part, these might be PNP. So let's reverse the leads here. And uh, there we go. Okay. 0.7 volt drop. About the same. So this one here should be about the same. Oh, touching the leads together. Okay, so that's good. And, oh, you can't really see what I'm doing, but, yeah, right there. So, all three of those look like they should be fine. Let me check the ones on this side. Uh, we got, this one here says Y1, Y1, and Y2. Let's check the, the Y2 part here. So it's just going to be the same as the other Y2s over here, so this one would be the base. That was probably the collector, and this is probably the emitter. So that looks pretty good. The other one's probably going to be NPN parts, so we'll swap the leads around. So that looks good. That looks good. This one should be the same. That looks good, and that looks good. So it looks like our gate drives are fine on here, so nothing. Nothing died there. All right, let's roll this back in. Okay, so board went here. Probably just gonna put one screw in just to hold it in place so that it doesn't roll around. Huh, that's funny. I just noticed this too. Um, here they're using these uh, sort of like countersunk screws on each corner. This one had three of those uh, kind of countersunk ones and then they had one of those uh, pan heads. So guessing they must have misplaced one or something. We're just going to put the one screw in the corner here just to hold it down so it doesn't flop around. But, okay, better than nothing. All right, so let's hook this back up. This is uh, this one's marked motor hall, so I'm assuming that's the hall sensors for the motor. Well, I mean, they should be. So we'll put that here. That's where that goes. Hook up the blue to blue yellow and they covered it with tape oh and then we got green all right so this one here is the serial connection put that in there this one here goes to here let's plug this motor in so we got blue okay green And yellow. Okay, all right, got the batteries connector here. I'll just leave this on the outside. We'll hook up the LEDs to there. All right, what else do we need? Let's see. Let's plug in. Eh, we're not gonna bother with those LEDs right there. We'll leave it like that. The only other things that went plugged into this one were the uh, the button and the other LEDs, so I'm not going to bother with those. Let's hook up the battery to this side. Battery, we'll hook up the battery to this side. Let's be careful here, if anything, if it sounds like it's marking or anything, I'm going to pull it right back out. Hopefully nothing goes up in smoke. Boy, made a little popping sound. I hope that was just the uh, capacitors charging. Touch it again and see if anything Okay, I think that was just the uh, capacitor, the bolt caps right here uh, charging up. So it looks like that should do it for a test. I will, since this was the side that the power button was on, I'm going to touch those two pins right there with a the screwdriver. And we'll see if it beeps, turns on, does something. Uh, let's double check everything here. Got those connected, serial. Uh, all that stuff's connected there. Batteries looks like we should be good. Let's see. Hey, I don't know if you noticed it here, but there's a little green LED on the corner that turned on just now when I touched it. Hey, there it goes. It's turned on. Well, that's good news. Let's flip this over. I am not going to put it right on the table because I don't want it to roll away from me. 
All right, sit on top of this box for now. So the buttons, so I guess to go forward and backwards are in these two spots right here. So let me see if it does anything. If I push on the front and the back here. Um, it's, okay, I don't know what that means, but it's doing something. Okay, it's moving. There we go. Well, let's see. Okay, this side's turning. Yeah, so yeah, the, the farther you, you tilt it, the, the faster it goes. So, okay. For some reason, I can't get this side to do anything over here. Maybe I'm just not. There it goes. All right, let's see. There we go, okay. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this upside down because of the fact that those, that the accelerometers are meant to operate, you know, like on one side, but let's see. Maybe we can, maybe we can do it this side. Let's, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna push these two back ones right here. And, oops, we should probably not let that rub on the wheel. Okay, so, it's working. There it goes. Woo! That's kind of scary. <laughs> it like just kind of, when it breaks, it just kind of jerks all of a sudden. But, so right there, tilting it one way. So, it seems to be working fine. I'll push the other side, both of these here. Uh, kind of hard to do with and trying to keep my hands out of the way there, but maybe if I do from the bottom. Um, it seems like it only wants to go in one direction right now. I think because of the fact that it's upside down. Oh no, there it goes. So I guess it doesn't really matter which which one of the sensors you interrupt, as long as it tilts in the right direction, it'll go that. Yeah. So it seems to be working. So I guess all I got to do is replace those um, MOSFETs on that that one side. We should probably hook up the, I mean, I still gotta fix the charger, which I'm probably just gonna end up replacing that LM358 on and see if that takes care of it. Uh, I guess once it's putting out 42 volts, it should probably be fine. Um, I'm gonna hook up this, uh, the button, make sure that there's not something wrong with that, which I, I kinda don't think there would be. So, there it is, we pushed the button. Nope, turned off. And it turns right back on. So I'm guessing what it does is when you hit the power button, it probably does a check and make sure that the systems are functional and if it detects that something is wrong, like in the case of this one that those MOSFETs were shorted, if it you know detects something, it just it just won't even turn on at all. That, that's my guess. I, I, like I said, I don't know exactly how these work. But yeah, so looks like there's nothing wrong with the battery pack, which is good. I'm gonna order those. And then I'll put it back together and I'm going to try to ride one of these things and you'll probably see me fall. I don't know. <laughs> I've never ridden one, so I don't know how to ride one. I mean, I mean, I know how it works, sort of, but never ridden one. So we'll see how that goes.